so that really huge pocket pick that uh, Tola goes for from yeah. time to time. Boxio being removed. Now, this is because of that group stage matchup where we saw them really having that boxer running around, open to the response, and just tanking out so much of that damage. So, with that, they open up the power, but they will pick it up for themselves. Yeah, and here, what's interesting is that Boxio is out of the picture. 10 seconds game, I'm gonna go for the x Y, and I think Todak were ready to deal with that, as well as the Grok. High loss has been set up perfectly by Todak. They could pick it up for themselves, as you know, a pretty decent tank does the job extremely well, and maybe set up with something else, like a Kufra, on top of it. Well, I really like how you actually process it so well, because they ban out the Boxio, which is a great possible counter pick to that Masha as well, that high loss as well. Now, back towards the side of 10 seconds game plus real soon after they lock this pick in. Lilia, 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 Lilia. Ooh, it's a Lilia against Harith matchup, which again, it is pretty dicey because Lilia needs to play at a much higher level to land the abilities compared to Harith, where he just has to spam a lot of buttons to kind of get ahead in terms of that DPS. But Todak have to make a decision. Do they want to get rid of High Loss here? Because they've kind of revealed what they have on the table, but instead, they're going to ban out the carry. What could they be setting up for? Hmm, they're setting up for the Granger to be opened up for again, but. 10 seconds giving plus, of course, they need to find a little different sort of option. They can't really go in with that sort of a claw because it's really hard for them to even dive a Harif or uh, to actually commit to uh, facing off with that Kufra as well. So, one last ban for 10 seconds giving plus. This might be their very final game. Instead, they ban off the Kimmy, which means that they might just want to take that Granger for themselves, but instead, Locking onto the Cho. So, hold up here. They still got what they want, so they can still go for it. Yeah, and so far, they kind of, they're flexing the Cho because they're not entirely sure what to do. I don't think the Kimmy ban uh, was necessary. They could have banned anything else to kind of limit the pool, but I think they're just they're just saying like, hey, we know you're not going to pick up Kimmy anytime soon. We don't feel like Kimmy is going to be that great for you. Therefore, let's open up the pool a little bit more because we ban something out like a con. We're forced to either pick up Ranger or Kimmy, which might not be in their comfort zone. Hayabusa oh. being the pick. You mentioned it before. That assassin, even though you have that fighter, this is looking to be a 1-3-1. One three one formation, like you said, Akai being brought in as well. So I'm looking back at Tessex Gaming Plus. How are they supposed to respond to this? Are they supposed to pick up a marksman right here, which I don't really feel is the best of options? Oh, is it locking no. in that house? I thought that it will be a double base composition for one cent, but this looks to me to be a little bit better scaling into the late game in this sort of way. But which that actually means it's down to the export as well as Lilia to actually force out all these damage output that we just saw. I don't like it. I don't like it, and here's why. Kaja is open. They decided to go for the high loss. He's going to take Revitalize, and Nanas on his Akai is going to push him out of the zone. We've seen RRQ do it in Group A. We've seen it happen multiple times whenever someone brings out the high loss, and it gets punished. So. Personally, if they play their cards right and they execute perfectly, I think Todak can get ahead in terms of just the sheer draft alone. However, we're talking about perfect execution. They have a, a much more mechanically heavy comp. Well, mechanically heavy means that they need to put on their A game and it's now or never. We see them possibly on their wits end already as Todak has drafted so well in a way that they stole a lot of their key picks away from 10 Seconds Gaming Plus. And even that Hayabusa pick is something that 10 Seconds Gaming Plus did fall back to. So this gives them that sort of the uh, question where, okay, now, now that we've already lost out some of all these things that we played before or are comfortable at playing, they, they also have things that are a lot more DPS in, in that sort of sense, with yes. Bulldogs being opened up, but we know that it may not be the best option, but it was also reliable, but instead, going for that high loss right here, which means that they just really want to outlast every one of these members of Todak in every battle. Yeah, and that's the thing, outlasting is going to be tough, because like each one of the... Uh, what's really difficult is that they have Harith. Number one, Harith is going to be an absolute monster. The question is whether Todak can execute really really well because it's and kind of on it's kind of on Torak to make the first move to engage to look for these opportunities while 10 seconds gaming 
they don't mind kind of sitting back, relaxing, kind of looking for these side lanes to get these pickoffs on their assassins, and as well as their fighters like Masha or even Hayabusa, because if they can punish them, they're running out of win conditions here. That's right, and I I would definitely say to the side, looking really solid. They have what it takes, they have the damage output, and now it's time for them to just show it to the world, show it to the Malaysian fans right here that they deserve to be here rightfully to claim the M1 troll. Oh, this game is going to be exciting here. One game away from victory and one game away from losing to the side of 10 seconds gaming. I mean, I can't imagine. This is why I'm not a player. I don't think I can deal with that kind of pressure on my back. I, I can't take that sort of a heartbreak anyways. And I love both teams, but at the end of it all, we might have to say goodbye to either one of these sides. And now, 10 seconds gaming plus, not ready to say goodbye yet as they are fighting for their last chance fighting for the spot to take the crown. M1 World Championship 2019 sure is what it is as we are looking at the potential push over the top side here. Obuyen as well as Amiibo already at the proxy wave on the top side. Very good lane management coming in from both sides here. We can see that, you know, 10 seconds game realizing they have a slight advantage because you have to scale in compositions that take some time. Oh no, they're in trouble. They're quickly flickering out of there. The buff has been stolen. They have to walk away here, but still, no burst blood. And Moon hasn't been able to hit that level two. That's going to be huge. 10 seconds gaming going for a very greedy play. They want all the buffs. <laughs> and we're looking at 10 seconds gaming playing their signature way of just raiding everything as they go. But Papa here, already spotting out that Cooper from Milwaukee right in, and Tomibo Obuya Sure will this leave nothing behind. This is disgusting because they are punishing Todax level one. They knew they had the stronger level one, and now they basically forced them out of level four. They're gonna be so far behind the EXP. Papa, he's taking a bit of damage and taking the brunt of it, but he doesn't mind. He knows his team is getting ahead. It's honestly not too shabby in a certain way that they know that Todak could not really commit to that full push. And so these guys are chasing in. Good. So a little bit way too much of the damage. As we see, this tank is coming out from Tamibo as well as Obi. They're going for a dodge. Nice. And both goes. Lost and Sally pop. And 10 seconds game plus takes first blood. Great. And though they might get one more in return, they might trade two for one for one. Sure goes down to Hyrule. Says Oki. Shadow kill. Great response from Todak. Because I thought 10 seconds gaming were going to get away with that. Looking at Moon, he's only level three. I thought so as well, but you know, he actually hung around way too long, right under the noses of the tower, and well, that definitely deserves a little bit of punishment in that sense. Oh, definitely, definitely. Now, Jiku, he's getting ahead. We've seen Jiku carry games before. Can he do it one more time on something that is a little bit out of the uh, out of place now? Oh, he's a turtle. It has been slain. He's going down. E1, he's going to make it away, but he's going to die. He hits level four. It's not going to be enough. 10 seconds gaming continue to build that advantage. Well, they're getting back the momentum that you used to have. and. With that sort of a righteous pathway being opened up, uh -oh. Tataka set it up with a way of dragon, and now there's nothing left to do for Chiku. That was a nasty catch. Flickers forward, instantly goes for the way of the dragon. Perfect pixel, perfect distancing. Moon, so little, so far away, finally hits level four. It's so mechanical as well. Not many would actually opt to do that. It's either they, they talk about, oh, setting up the shoot bow or Chiku Do to actually get that knockup in. But even if you get that knockup, your enemies can still try to actually flicker away in the sort of sense. But uh, that was definitely huge commitment from 10 Seconds Gaming Plus. As we see a little bit of that movement, it is the bottom side. They were getting after Dark Boot, so that Lydia can dive anytime she wants. Yeah, they're playing top to bottom here. We can see 10 Seconds Gaming. They have ten, five of their, four of their members actually down on the bottom side. But looking at the battle spells, two revitalizers coming from 10 Seconds Gaming. They want to team fight all the time. They also have your fight on that Lydia as well, so that's extra safety net for them. Chiku as well as E1 will be able to secure that buff for the top side here as we see Suray joining in as well, spotting out the as well as E1. Here comes Obuya in the middle of it all. And Tomibo trying to actually take down E1. E1 being crossed to flicker away. And now they're looking to catch out Nenas. 
Oh, Thousand Pounder actually making out. OBS should be able to pick this well, up. Flicker. Oh, forcing out the Flicker. He should die to the Guardian's barrier here. When it comes back up, Power Nature should secure the kill. Rest of the team on the bottom side. Jiku is in trouble. He's trying to outplay this, but Tamimo is just so far ahead. Papa might go down to X-Ray here. X-Ray gets the solo kill down bot side. Not too sure how it really went Charlie down, but it was soon. a full commitment coming from Papa, which should not really happen. But here comes Moon being pulled away by the rest of Hat Seconds Game Plus. Whip, oh, oh, that finisher from Kaka. Moon is not having a great game this time around. Like, yet, yeah, last game he was doing great. Now it's just kind of like, ooh, I am getting punished. <laughs> like, this is usually uh, the ones that punish people, as we see. Nope, E1 right here. Already getting caught up for the second time coming. He can knock over the wall, but it doesn't really mean all too much as the Mabo alongside with the Highlands will be able to pull him right back. Then that might just be the next one to fall, but he should be able to actually soak in some damage. Anyways. Oh my goodness, this is domestic abuse. Let 10 seconds, let Tona play the game, man. Let Moon walk up. E1 as well, getting punished. He can't walk up anymore. Even even when he tries, he gets insta locked down. I'm, all, I'm not too sure for that. Now, don't really have that clear idea anymore. They're losing objectives after the death to Taka for the OG Town kill. Big few oh, oh, That was so good! They go oh, back and oh, Actually, I hope there is a replay of this. Obuyan might be going down, and the rest of the team goes through. Sure moves in for the law and order, locks out E1. He goes down. The Nas is the next to fall, and Papa is here to clean it up. I just love replies after replies. Blow for blow they go, and Suray lost out to Mimo, secures that mid lane tower. X-Ray getting on the chase against Papa as well. But wow, let's talk about that Hayabusa right there because Chiku went in for the smooth moves. And because smooth moves here, Moon won't be able to actually take the weight that star buff as Tommy Mimo skills it off. It was so smart because he initially used the shadow, uh, uh, sorry, the quad shadow. The moment it touches your opponent, it locks onto him and creates three other shadows. He quickly dashes to the closest one instead of the one on top of him, uses the OK shadow kill, waits for it, goes right back in, throwing the shurikens and securing the kill onto that show. The patience from this man. And it was the perfect play. Like, even in the heat of the moment, usual players will just put a match by then and like, you know, uh, screw it, I'm just gonna be dead anyway. <laughs> but he still made it out with at least a consolation prize. Yeah, so well done. But let's see how 10 seconds game they want to abuse their lead. Jiku might be in a little bit of trouble. Totaka putting quite a bit of damage in there. Jiku is playing the running game. Oh, he yeah. gets hit by the lob charge. Okay, shadow kill to dodge the abilities. He goes out with the quad shadow. He He's dancing around! He's dancing with the stars! Oh. Jiku goes back! He gets locked out! Tataka was waiting for that quad shadow! E1 oh, is gonna join him in the grave! Make no mistakes, that's the bottle of 10 seconds gaming right here. Turtle they pretty waited for him long enough, and Moon now being caught out by himself. There's no way! No way he could possibly actually get this sort of kill. But Papa turning around with that dark boot as oh, well. But oh, oh, he dashed into the gloom. He <laughs> dashed into it. Oh, he just needed to wait for half a second longer. Well played. But right now, 10 seconds gaming is not letting Fordot play the 1-3-1 that they initially thought they would get ahead with because they're pulling pressure to the bottom side, they're rotating to the mid side, but they still have strong wave clear, which is making it difficult for Tordak to actually get that pressure. Not to mention, they're one, uh, one of their bigger win conditions. Harren is supposed to be putting the pressure in the mid. He can't do it no more. Yeah, and we can evidently see the immense pressure that was created, like you said, and with that sort of pressure that they have, Tessex's Gaming Plus could easily open up that turtle. And now, the next objective would definitely be that Lord, and I don't see any reason how Toda could even get anywhere close for the current time being. So that watch is definitely creating some space for the top side, though. Yeah, they need to keep doing this. That's the problem. They don't have a choice. They're just going to try and wave clear as much as they can. Masha is going to have to deal with Totaka one more time in oh. the top side, and he needs to win this 1v1. He's under turret. He's starting to put damage into Totaka, who has an immortality. I don't think he can win this, though. Oh, you are safe. Doubting him for a little bit, but here it oh. comes. That's going to be immortality in the as well as the talent force. Thank you for that, Moon. That will be a takedown here as they did not expect the Harem coming from the back. Great play coming in from Moon. There to secure. They got the kill and they 
relieve themselves a lot of pressure. The siege has been broken on the mid side. They don't take any turrets. 10 seconds gaming come off with a loss. Chico clears up the mid wave. This is so, so smart. And it's not only the first wave, this is the second wave that Chico has cleared out as well. So he's definitely joining every single turn of these minions from arriving into the mid lane resetting the tempo and now Toda finally found that reason to come back up online. I have never seen a team do this before. Oh no, X-Ray is in trouble. He needs to pull himself out. He goes down straight away, but Nenas trying to make the play. Locks out Obuya. Glorious pathway coming in from the high loss just to scare him off. Oh, no, that was nasty as we see this ninja here. The Tiku will be breaking, switching over on side of Tataka and Toad out here, they have so much to lose in that sort of sense, but they are still trying to actually take down that chill while E1 all by himself, Flicker being popped out as well. He does Lord, not have soon. the safety net of an immortality, so he cannot afford more mistakes. But actually, they get taken out, and here comes the Lord that we spoke about, and as I can plus are already getting themselves that hit start. Yeah, I mean, they can't contest it at all. You can see that Chiku on the top side of the map, he just wants to push this out, but again, Todak might need to throw their bodies just to slow them down. Yes, that's what you gotta do. Don't let them get this Lord. Buy more time. Totaka is already running to the top side. It's a 3v4 on the bot side of the map. Lord, can it be stolen away? Here it comes. Lord has been slain by Brock. 10 seconds gaming. Now turn on to Nenas, who tries to get on out of their top side. He is under siege. I think they broke it now Totaka is gonna go down. He dies, but they have deaded themselves. Lord, that's not too bad. Not too bad, I'm afraid, as we're looking at E1 here. E1? Oh, e -1? only moving. Uh -oh. Not too sure what's really going on. He's just waiting for a time, stalling it out. As we see, 10 seconds gaming for us. We'll possibly have to let him fall. And he's just buying time, just trying to negate the Lord from marching forward, but not really the sort of risk that you should be taking, though. No, I think this this could actually work because now he's bought some time for the rest of the team to clear out the other waves that have been empowered by Lord, and now they can pull back. Masha just cleared it. Now she's going for that tier two. If she can break this, Whoa, she says she's got it. She's got it. X-ray. He's got it. He's gonna go back. Top side is under siege. They're playing the one three one so well. They're pulling back Lord. Oh my God! I just could not believe that is so dirty, but it worked so well. So Taga here have no replies whatsoever. They tried time and time again to bring down this monster. The rest of the team are looking in the middle. He's having Fox being used up as well. But trying to actually run away. Like Wendy Suri trying to lock him on his track. Pop up coming from the back as well. The leader going on a chase. And here comes Hulk and Death. And there was this battle here. Breaking the, uh, on the wall. Chico. And it's Chico. Oh, Chico coming in as well. That's a kill speed for the leader. But Papa gains credit now. Chico won't be able to hold him down for dear life. And Chico is going to be bringing this building to the Todak here, looking for the victorious one as they break down for all these members. Ten seconds, Gary Plus. Oh my God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cramp my pants, man. They did it, they did it, they broke it through. After they're playing from behind and they're looking to knock on that score, they're bringing it to tier two. They're going for another kill. Tataka has to make this work. He needs to clear it out. Jiku goes out, he still has the immortality. They're not going to break the inhibitor this time round. But 10 seconds gaming, I think they have definitely underestimated just the 300 IQ coming out of Tordak to kind of play the map. Both sides are not getting giving up the smartest of the pack going against each other and now they really gotta take a breather <laughs> right now because we cannot even <laughs> bat them in that team fight because we lost our brains right there right then and we thought hey it was all about split push and we did not see that sort of flank coming on the way when Chico arrived everyone just got deleted I have never seen a team think uh, think this far about minion wave management. This is actually so, so smart. E1 dying on top side has just netted his team an absolute free fight. I don't think people understand how important E1's time on the top side costed them. Oh my god. And that is the next level play, the next level setup mm -hmm. that we did not expect. I doubted him because like For sure hey, it's like why are you dying there? Well like you're giving things away and with one AFK Kufra, you thought, hey, that's an easy free kill right there for Tessica's game plus. Yes indeed. 
but what comes next was definitely unexpected. Unbelievable. Unbelievable hiccups in between, but they will not make that hinder them as we will get back into it. This epic matchup. 10, 10 seconds game plus. They might have the higher kill volumes right here. They might have gotten back the lead uh, that they have, but wow. Just look at the gold, dude. Look at that gold. It just, it doesn't really matter too much because they've evened it out finally after being so far behind. They actually caught back up into the game. They bought enough time for Lord to spawn. And by the time Lord spawns, they're going to be basically even with 10 seconds gaming. Now, 10 seconds gaming have one window. They're going to hit their next couple of items. Moon just bought his Holy Crystal. It's going to be a little bit more difficult, but it's still doable. Definitely doable. Now, E1. The most selfless tank that we've ever seen, Tomibo, getting chugged down to 50%. That's just what half he could possibly do. Chiku didn't really fully commit, but here comes Wave of the Dragon, trying to bring down X-Ray once again. X-Ray is the key component, bringing everything together into peace for Todak. As we see, Todak, of course, forcing out one by story. X-Ray just has to run. Run, boy, run. You need to buy one time for your team. Chico on the top side. He's going to go for that clear. The rest of the team is rotating around. Home They're run. They're keeping control. Saray is what? run out. They fall what? behind. They're turning back on the side. Moon's in trouble. He gets hit by the initial bouncing ball. But the rest of the team pulls back. And now they get to breathe one more time. Chico is alive. So Mabel just used the last insanity. This might be a call for Todak to maybe pull something out of here and get 10 seconds gaming while they're on their backs. Well, now, a little bit of push and pull. One second to the Lord and the Masha is already at the camp, just waiting for the Lord to arrive. And this Lord might just be the game here as we see 10 seconds forcing their way across the fray. And Suray's already in trouble. Russia's family has already been opened up by the high loss. As we see the Nuts Bay in the front line here. Popping right back as well. E1 as well. Suray here trying to go from blow for blow. Looking for X-ray. And now they burn him down instantly. And Sam takes around. 10 seconds game left. Losing members. Double kill for the Masha. They're going in. That's over top side. It is being opened up with Chiku trying to actually defend that pushes all Away. The boy is inside. Oh my God! Opening up, and there's not enough minutes. It's so so close. They they played the split push really well. Torak is still playing to their game plan. They know 10 seconds gaming kids are only strong when they are together. They are playing the macro game to perfection. Chiku can solo this. Technically, you would want Masha to do it, but X-Ray is already dead, so he has to compensate here, but he doesn't have enough damage to do this fast enough. He needs space from his team. Lilia and Tataka are coming into the backside. Moon, they're holding their way. Chiku wants to make this happen. Oh, he goes into the track. Okay, oh, shadow kill. Return, charge it, pop. Up, he goes down, he still has black shoes, he can make the turn around, Papa, he's dead, they find a good catch, and Tordak is coming back, they've evened out the score, 46 to 46k. Seems like they might just have to pull off a white flag right here on that Lord, because they could not chase in anymore, but the Ektor here still wants the last hero, he wants to find a way to snatch it off, and he does have the retribution already. And here we go. Lord being snatched up by Tonak here. And it's high time. Ready to go, baby. Tomibo does have the Let immortality. Him Let him go. There's no need to force this out. Now, this is 10 seconds gaming opportunity to punish Tonak. Now that Lord is pushing through, they can deal with the split push because they can hold on to that crystal. You can take everything away from 10 seconds gaming. But as long as that crystal stands, they are the more dominant force in team fights. Yes, indeed. And they have definitely dominated from mid-game hours with those genius plays that we just saw. And I did like Obuyan pushing the wave all the way towards the top side because he knows if the war were to come up, it will be marching over the top lane. So now it's Soldat's challenge to balance things up and hoping that these minions can possibly come in at the right time. And if they can manage all these sort of macro plays so well, yeah. it shouldn't be too hard for Todak to pull this on off. Now, Lord is knocking 
on their door. Let's see if they can break an inhibitor. Kodak still playing. They're not forcing out the fight just yet. 10 seconds gaming. Building up to a big fight. Seven Force has been popped on the top side of the map. Masha has finally broken down. Tamemo is taking it. Okay, Shadow Kill to the face. Obria is in trouble. He's going down. And Surai taking more on the front of the damage. Glorious pathway. They defend again. one. Tamemo oh, no. trying to get around. Lilia getting with Gloom. And they continue. They want the crystal. Jinko! Jinko's holding on. They don't have a way. They have to pull back. They're going to be A-OK, -okay, and this is what I talked about. 10 seconds gaming, not going to be going down. Whoa! There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The perfect defense being displayed by 10 seconds gaming. Still hanging on, and I am losing my voice here, Gideon. We are <sighs> just going down to a 20-minute game. I can't. This is... This is heart-wrenching for me. I love having the Malaysian representative, but 10 Second Gaming is also playing so, so well. I might just fail No Not November right here, no, right now, but overall- I'm gonna fill it with you. <laughs> now you've made it weird. Now it's weird. But overall, 10 Seconds Gaming, their defense is on point. They know they win these team fights. Kodak just has to open up the map a little bit more to find that window to really break the crystal. Now we're seeing Suray, of course, clearing things up, but X-Ray alongside with Chiku there, overcommitted for no apparent reason. Now, laid up this brand in the hands of X-Ray, as if this Masha is not hard-hitting enough, it's going to be even worse as we see that force push over the top side here. And that's going to be less than 80 seconds for another Lord possibly the final one that we need to see. Now we can at least take a breather here to kind of really analyze what's going on because we know for a fact that Seconds Gaming, they want to stick together to take these bigger fights. Now, Lord is a huge objective. Oh wait, Kotaka, he's in trouble. He kicks away X-Ray. X-Ray is low, but he doesn't have enough damage. He doesn't scale. He has to flicker out of there. He's going to be A-OK, -okay, but Chiku again, this is what I'm talking about. Hold on, what, E1? E1? Excuse me. Chiku is in trouble now. The rest of the team is going for a recall. If they get caught out, this could be it. Oh, down the force being utilized as well. Totaka still has the immortality, but here comes Obuya now. Trying to actually set a temple there, bringing that wall up. Great Barrier will not possibly let this Masha run as freely as we saw her yeah. in the Ooh. earlier phases. Now, a little bit of a reset going in once more. 20 more seconds here as we see a little bit more blue headed towards this graph. Oh my goodness. 10 seconds gaming here. They have to play the macro well now. They just netted themselves a huge win killing E1 because Lord is going to be spawning around the same time E1 just walks out of base, which gives them a little oh, bit of an opportunity to punish somebody. Nenas is not going to be the target of choice, but they need to clear up that waves, kind of make sure Todok don't have that particular win condition of that pushing lane so that they can take Lord safely, but X-Ray, he's not gonna have any of that. Wow, X-Ray here walking all the way and- Oh, he's gonna absorb sure. all the waves. This, this this is a very daring attempt. And they are trying to actually bring back every single member of 10 Seconds Gaming Plus, risking his own life, but X-Ray walks out of the line with a flicker, and here comes Opoia coming into the battle uh -oh. here. They're not taking it all, and that will be the pan of Akai. Still alive, and now he does have immortality, so it's gonna get a little bit harder. E1 possibly hopping right in. Now they both connect, and Surrey speaks up on the track flow with the time frame being used to the line. Ochi Shao kill will not this be bad. Able to now. And now, here comes the chase. A little bit of fight coming in at the back, but there will be the Masha getting uh -oh. a little bit of oh it's gonna be a trouble, they're gonna have to pull back. Nobody dies just yet. This is like the beginning of the game where nobody could get that initial first blood. Now Moon, he has to pull backwards. Oh my goodness. I think the next fight we're gonna see literally three Zaman forces before the cave even ends. <laughs> but X-Ray, solo wing the Lord. They're doing such great rotations for the side of Todak. This is absolutely amazing. But 10 seconds gaming, they caught whiff of it. There's still the Hayabusa over on the bottom side as well. Now let's have our eyes fixated on towards what's really going down on the bottom side. Well, let's forget about that for a little bit more because it's still this Lord for the taking for either sides, which will, I dare say, the decider, if even if 10 seconds game plus will get this Lord, then they Agreed. can easily, easily turn this fight around. And now, here we go. Oh, Tomemo, he just got checked out. He doesn't, he didn't get to use the last insanity. This might be the call. They're pulling through. They're splitting up to the side lanes. They're keeping control. X-Ray is putting some damage into Suray. Not going to be doing much. E1's in trouble now. He's going to get caught out. The rest of the team needs to respond. Do Dark. something with this pressure. E1 is not going down. Moon, he's back in. His diamond force should be coming up real soon. Chrono Dash is forward. Doesn't get the stun. They pull back. A 
again, the tickle fest continues. We are seeing both sides being a little bit invincible at this point in time. With so much of all these defensive items being stacked up, the Papa has the immortality in that sort of sense. So we, you have Dark Boots, which is already annoying enough. And now, so that's just tickling the Lord for a little bit more. They know they just need to find 10 seconds game plus. You have all five members to commit, but there's always that toe over the back, safeguarding the crystal. And here comes Boots uh -oh. committing into this. Seven plus being popped already. Tomato taking quite a bit of the damage. Obuya is still doing a okay. The last insanity still up for the moment. Oh, Bottom Akai. side, Akai is actually making a play. Obuya going through with a wild touch. They just found their win condition. They kill the side later. They're rotating back up. They need to make something happen here. Todak, Todak are walking back up. It's a one for one train. They're still holding their ground. Todak need to climb together. Boot is going to get popped up by himself. He takes him out. The revitalize is not going to be there. It's not going to be this enough. Papa with the touch He goes. Down. He has the ultimate. They're pulling back through. They want to end this game Tataka. right here, right now. The ultimate. He's gonna go. He has the minions. And there we go. Boon trying to finish off the final move. But Sure, way too tanky. It's gonna be real tough for him. But Boon with another shield. They gonna send this one around. Boon with enough damage, and he will slice, dice, and shred down. 10 seconds game plus to only three members left. Oh my goodness. I, I now realize why I missed less than two minute fights. I don't, I'm sorry, why I don't like two minute fights. It is a long, long shout, but my goodness, nobody profits off of this situation. <laughs> We're back to square one. Back Contra. to square one indeed. And even Sasaka is already going in for that very final item right there. <laughs> Thunder Bell, okay. Might let's, as well, bring that, right? let's bring that in as well. <laughs> Buy all your potions. Get this one all stacked up. And we even see Hayabusa finishing off Malefic Roar in that sense. So gold does not matter. Gold really does not matter at this point. Absolutely. It's just about taking that game or perhaps that lore. Who is going to make the play first? I think both sides really don't want to commit all in. And that's why the fight dragged for so long. They're just waiting for the right conditions to happen. But once they realized that Tatana actually died on the bottom side, he was able to clear the minions off before they could end the game because they had two members bottom side for the side of Todak. Moon just needs to kind of buy time and peel for the rest of his team. E1 is just so, so freaking tanky. This definitely goes down in my history book as the best game so far. At Hands the very down. least. Hands down, Hands down the best you. game. This is not even the grand finals, ladies and gentlemen. That will happen tomorrow, but this already feels like it. And the crowd getting so focused right here. They really want to check out what's going to happen next. E1 just hopping right at the back. So Mebo slowly opening these things up, but look at the pressure mounting towards the bottom side. We have Boon, Chiku, as well as Dinas here, just waiting for a little bit of a misstep. Once they know if they do catch out that child, if they do kill out that child, which means they do have that Lord for the taking. Yeah, and 10 seconds gaming, they're forced to respect Todak here in every move. They can't really force out the fight because there isn't an objective big enough on the map, which causes them to kind of go into a bigger T fight. And here we go. And so, one rig is over, guys. So it's time for us to see who matches, snatches a lot away. So even though it's being left up wide for the taking, they know that it's too huge of a risk because if they were to try to attend the Lord right now, it means that it's a full commitment towards the team fight here. Yeah, this could be soul crushing. The next fight is so dependent on who makes a better play. Immortality being bought by X-Ray once more. Looks like the cooldown has been finished. They need to see how they want to play this out. Top side, Tomebo is getting a pick onto E1. But again, we've seen this happen time and time again. Moon comes to his rescue to turn this around because nobody has the hard CC to deal with it. Salmon Force is being popped out to Mabel, forced to use the last insanity into the back line. And now the rest of Tona want to make something happen. Whoa. Akai, no, this is a fight. Moon's in trouble. He actually goes down. The immortality is popped out. Lily kills him off. And now 10 seconds gaming. They have an advantage. They have a chance to actually push into Lord. And now they're looking to actually absorb a little bit more pressure here, trying to actually take down the Nas, but he's way too tanky for the likes of members of Tensex Gaming Plus. Tomebo slowly regaining that armor as well with that little bit of lifestyle that he has. Still chasing over Panda, which possibly could even go extinct for now. Tataka now 1v1 yes. against x -ray. They got what they needed. And OG Shadow Kill heading in. Chico here. Oh no. Oh no. Days. But now he will be taken down. And wow, here comes Lord for the taking. 
for 10 seconds game plus. But Lavoya, we still have Fumra waiting in lines, as well as Akai. These are the only two members, the only hope for Toda to actually steal this one away. So race on him out. Brian's actually chumps down the HP. It might just be it. So it's time for us to see whether or not could they commit to this and 10 seconds game plus will possibly secure this one as they've already chased away the rest of the members of Toda. And now the final lord. Might just be the final one. They need to buy time for the rest of the team to kind of spawn, do the exact same thing like how they did in the defense, cut the waves, look for pressure, make it happen because this is 10 seconds gaming's chance. On the opposite side for 10 seconds gaming, they need to protect their waves, they need to sit with Lord, they might be able to force it out, and I think it, honestly, it might even come down to a base race. Well, I think it should come down to that base race, and all they have to do is to make sure that bottom wave will be cleared all the way to at least the midpoint mm -hmm. because they know Masha is already waiting in line. So then, as I speak of it, they are already heading towards that point. As we mentioned, the potion for this side of Tomato. And now, let it begin as that Lord fully soaks up uh -oh. that top lane. It's actually right here doing all those dirty work. And even the weight of the dragon has been suspended just to hold him for a little while. But here comes Shiku in the mid lane as well. Four oh, members! Yes, okay, Shadow Kill. Oh, he goes down. The immortality has been broken. He tries to block Shadow all well, but he still goes down. One member, 10 seconds gaming. This is it. It's their time to shine, and they're looking to get an advantage. The Nas is going down. There we go. 10 seconds game plus gets that second kill in a row. Opens up the mid lane. They don't need to care whether there's minions or not. They're looking to beat down the fan favorites and silence the crowd here as they are forced to take this fight here. Oh, we are dropping low. The Empire just finishing off. There is still the immortality here. Immortality does not even matter as they go in for that mega kill. E now, Iman has to sacrifice his life here. He needs to throw his body in there just to get to the wave. He's being blocked. Oh. He's trying to make it happen. He's trying to get around. But again, he's not able to do it. He gets the Tyrant's Rage into Tyrant's Rage to clear the wave off. He might have just saved his There's team. There's no time left. There's no minions. There's no minions. Top side, the minions are just pulling through. They are really low. No, they still have one. They've done it. 10 seconds gaming after the pause.